Welcome to the F Word. I'm cooking a three course dinner for 60 diners. All stuff you can do at home. On the menu tonight, for our main course, Beef Wellington. Hugh Fernie Whittingstall comes to visit my urban farm and give me advice on how to get the kids ready for the big day. Taking something to slaughter is an emotional occasion. Yeah. You can't sort of totally put that out of the way. And Kim and Aggie get down and dirty in my kitchen. Yeah. Now! <laughs> Okay, guys. Right, Abbas. You're struggling to talk today. What's the matter? Nervous, chef. Nervous. You're nervous. Yeah? But... Nervous is a good sign. Yes. Are you nervous? I'm shitting myself. Chef. Shitting yeah. yourself. <laughs> so am I. Yeah. I do every time. Yeah. Before service. Okay. Good luck. Concentrate. Wake up, and I want to hear you a little bit. Yes. Yes, chef. Tonight's starter is a salad of roasted sea scallops with a cauliflower puree and a caper raisin dressing. Turn them now. Back on the heat. Every time you take that pan off, what's happening? You're losing. Uh, losing the heat. So you're going to boil it. Come on. My two comments this week are Abbas, who's 24. He was born in Iraq, grew up in London, and works in a French restaurant. I don't want you to be moody or stroppy. I want you to be concentrated on what you're doing. Nothing yes, more sir. than that, yeah? yeah? And try and keep your nose out of the way. And Tamar, who's just 18 years of age. Tamar's been working in his dad's kosher restaurant since he was 11. Now, you're not the smallest of cooks, so you're in danger of being clumsy. So on your toes like a ballerina, no problem, yes? Sir. At the end of the day, one will go home and the other will come back to compete for a job in my kitchen. Can they stand the heat? On order, six covers, table 11. Six salad of sea scallops, main course, six beef, Wellington, on crude, yes? Wait, Didn't hear you, Tamar. Yes, chef! That's better, thank you. How many scallops per portion? Uh, three, yeah, chef. So six pieces. That's right. Three six threes are? Six threes. 18. Best. Too late. Wake up. Always try to buy scallops that are actually in their shell because it's a great guarantee to how fresh they are. Now, to open up a scallop, it's quite easy. You get your knife and you push that through that tiny little gap and just twist. And once you've opened the shell, get the top of the knife and just slide against the top of the shell. And look what happens. The shell comes up. There you go. Now, the only piece of the scallop we're interested in is this white part here. Slide your thumb down the muscle and pop it out of its skirt. This orange beak, the coral it's called, I don't really like cooking with them because they taste of nothing and they get very rubbery. It's not worth it. Get rid of the orange part and just cook that nice white pearl. The easiest way to cut a scallop in half is look at this flat bit here and then just find out halfway and what that does, if you're halfway there, it cuts the scallop exactly into half. Look how fresh they are. They're still moving. They're still pulsating. That's the only way to eat scallops. Open up in your hand like that, yep. yeah? And then, in the seasoning here, we've got half curry powder, half salt. And when you season, always season from a height so it spreads across it. Yes, sir. OK, let's go. Four scallops into the pan. Scallops in, 12 o'clock. That's it, there you go. By the time we get down to 6 o'clock, we know exactly where to turn the scallops. OK, off the heat, watch, yes, and turn. Yes, sir. Good. Look how fresh these scallops are, let's go. And less olive oil in there next time, yeah? What yes, you're doing chef. now, Tam, is you're actually boiling the scallop as opposed okay, to soaking it, OK? Yes, yeah, Chef. Yeah? Back on the heat, come on. You're losing the heat in the pan. Right, stop. Stop, stop, stop. Tell me the difference between those scallops and those scallops. They're less cooked than those. Come on, then. I want them to start again. Get them in the bin and start again. I can't serve two portions nicely done and two portions that have been boiled. Now, turn around and work together a little yes, bit, chef. yes? Take your time. I'm serving the scallops on a delicious cauliflower puree. Now cook them in butter for about two to three minutes until they go nice and soft. And then we're going to add some milk. And what the milk does, it actually helps keep the puree really nice and vibrant white. Now as that milk starts to boil, we're going to finish it with a touch of cream. And now we're going to cook that out about another three or four minutes and then puree. It's really important to blend this when it's really nice and hot, so therefore the hotter it is, the finer it becomes. If you leave it to cool down, then you'll get lumps through it. So make sure that you always blend it when it's hot. OK. Now, look what's inside. This really nice, rich, creamy, smooth cauliflower puree. That will beat cauliflower and cheese any day. How many scallops you got per portion? Six per portion, OK, chef. good. Watch. Watch me. 
cauliflower puree on. Then the caper raisin vinaigrette. Watch. It's very strong. Yeah, it's very tasty. It's very tangy. Now we get the sweetness of the scallops on there, on top of the cauliflower puree. Presentation is crucial. The less elements in a dish, the more important it is to plate it upright. Right, stop. Stop there. OK. You're not listening to me. You're going around the outside of the plate again. Yeah? There you put them on. The scallops sit on top of the cauliflower puree. Let's start again. Yeah, third time lucky. I want you to really think about how much money we're wasting. And I want you, seriously, to wake up and get a grip. This is the same table we're doing for the third time, yes? Yes, chef. This doesn't go out properly. One of you are going home. Don't worry about waiting until later. Oil in the pan, let's go. Dear, oh dear. Just drizzle that round there like that. Now, look at yours and look at mine. Tell me the difference. You've gone out round the rim of the plate. Customers don't want to eat off the rim of the plate. You yeah. come in. Next time, get it right, OK? Clean the plate. Let's go. It was amazing. We, we spent the first two minutes trying to figure out what all the different flavours were and having various guesses. Um, we actually guessed mashed potato without the cauliflower, but the over, overwhelming flavour was the capers. Um, and, and the sweetness in that, it just complemented the scallops, it was fantastic. The cauliflower puree is, is lovely. I've never thought of puree and cauliflower before, but that's, it really works really well with the scallops, it's very nice. Ladies, good to see you. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Yes. You enjoyed your scallops? Oh, thank yes. you. They were lovely, but not Kim. quite to my uh, palate. Sorry, you, just, you don't like scallops? No, I mean, it's not to my palate. Really? No. Where have the corals gone? You know, every time I see a restaurant serving corals of scallops, I get out because of the cheapskate identification. They taste very... Oh, I love them. They're so rich. They're so creamy. I want oh. the corals. Give me the corals. I don't know what she's talking I about. I think, more importantly, they take twice as long to cook they? than they do with the white oh. meat. And by the time the corals cooked, the scallops overcooked. So. Okay. Ladies, what do you look for when you walk into a restaurant? I mean, hygiene-wise. Well, everything. I don't like cutlery that's been taken. That's all got watermark. I can't stand it. Okay. Everything's got, and I can't stand stem glass that have been yep. stored. And there's always dust here. I can't stand that. And clean loose, Kim. You want to come see my loose? Yeah. Yes. Come on. I do because uh, no. these always let restaurants down. Um, now, Gordon, dear, yes. you know you may be a, a famous chef, uh -huh. but you've got to inspect the loose, dear. Hmm. <laughs> I can't believe you put your head down there. Get in there. I'm, I'm not going to put get my head down. In uh, the, get yeah, in yeah, there. Get yeah, in yeah. there. What's it like? Yeah, there you go. Um, I mean, it looks quite clean, Joe. Yes. It actually smells that is quite clean. clean. That's clean. That is, yes. You're happy with that one? Nice. It's only pee pee on the seats. How can you spot pee pee underneath? Because if you turn sideways, the shine, it's all pee pee stains. You're doing a good job here. OK. Do your hand. Do you know, I've got to say, I'm, I'm highly impressed. You're happy with the toilets? They're clean. Are you rushing me out so, of here? Are we going to go back to the dining room? Get yeah. out. <laughs> Get out. Doing your favour. You haven't washed your hands. You've come out of the toilet and you haven't washed your hands. Now, excuse me, I've not come out yet, dear. Next on the menu, along with our main course of Beef Wellington, I don't believe it. Richard Wilson's in the house. No, I think Ross paid me £10,000 to see I'm sorry. Okay. New potatoes in first, we'll start soaking. Do not forget to take out the garlic. Yes, sir. Welcome back to the F word. Next up, our main course, a real classic. Fillet of beef wellington with sautéed potatoes and wilted baby gem lettuce. Beef fillet. Lean meat with little fine sinews of fat running through. It just melts in your mouth like butter. Season. Hot pan, olive oil. Seal. Mustard. Think about it. Fillet of beef wellington, English mustard. You're not going to put Dijon on there, are you? Mushrooms. Season. Blitz. Now, I've got to take the water out of the mushrooms. Look how wet they are. We don't put oil or butter into the pan. We put nothing in there. Look how much water's coming out now. Assemble. Cling film. Parma ham. Mushrooms. Beef. Centre. And roll. Roll. 
Twist it nice and tight. Chill. 20 minutes. Puff pastry. Beef. Unwrap. On to the pastry. Egg wash. Don't skimp on the egg wash now, because we really need it to stick. Tuck that in. Chill. Five minutes. Glaze. Score. Rock salt. Bake. The most important thing about a fillet of beef wedding is to do not slice it thinly, OK? Turn it round and slice it about an inch thick. Beef Wellington. Done. And lettuce goes in at the last minute, OK? Lettuce just takes literally 20 seconds to wilt. Nice hot pan. Don't get it too oily. Now, with the Beef Wellington, we're serving sauteed potatoes and wilted baby gem lettuce. Now, if you've never eaten cooked lettuce before, you have to try it because it is absolutely delicious. Hot pan, olive oil, and these are the outside leaves of the baby gem, the nice, big, thick, robust leaves. So, into the pan and quickly saute them. Out. Beautiful. Now, saute new potatoes. These are part boiled, so they've been boiled for about four and a half to five minutes. And then we leave the skins on and just cut them in half. And we part boil them, A, to soften them, and B, so they actually stay nice and whole. And then get some garlic and some thyme. And what we do with the garlic is we just get the clover garlic. We don't need to peel it. We just get a clove like that on the board and just crush. So that sort of crushes, oozes the scent of the garlic into the potatoes and then perfumes them and great for flavour. And then into the pan. Again, nice hot pan. Now to get some really nice colour on the potatoes. And then, 30 seconds before the potatoes come out of the pan, just a little knob of butter in there, so it gives that really nice golden brown colour on the potato. Now, Christmas is almost here, and my turkey's time is running out. I'm trying to grow my own Christmas dinner, and Hugh Furley Whittingstall is the main man when it comes to small holdings. Hello, Hello mate. Are you well? Are you? Very well. Good to see you. Santa's come early. Uh, well, I'll say yes. What's in there? The presents are not for you, and they're not even for the kids. No. They're for the birds. He's brought the ingredients for his own recipe turkey feed. Special Christmas treat. So what's in there, exactly? OK, let's have a look. The main mix that yep. I think you should get them on for the last two weeks is whole grain barley, some walnuts. Fantastic. So we've got barley. We've got barley, whole barley grains, and uh, oats. And walnuts. And walnuts. Now, that is a, an old uh, turkey rearer's trick. Just the natural oils in that, just give them a little bit of a boost. Amazing. So we're almost feeding them their perfect sort of Christmas lunch send-off, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. Right? We're giving them the best possible Christmas dinner so that you can have the best yeah. possible Christmas dinner. I'm fascinated what you're going to do with the apples. I'll bring them out. Yeah. We'll have a play with them a bit later on. Let's go with this first. Excellent. What do you think of the space? This is a good space. You could do a lot here. You could go beyond the turkeys, for sure. You've just about got enough space here for a pair of pigs. Uh, maybe an idea for next year, but I mean, I'll let you break that one to the missus, you know that. OK. Let's see if they're at all interested in my special mix. How about that? Straight away. They seem to like it. Straight away. I think they could just have a little bit more stimulation while they're out on the lawn. You haven't got a croquet set, have you? OK, here we go. Now... Lovely set, Gordon. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> hasn't, hasn't, hasn't seen a lot of use. No, it hasn't seen it. It's the first time, you know that. Hugh thinks that pecking apples hanging from croquet hoops will relax the turkeys. And the relaxed bird is a tasty bird. So when my friend asked me, that croquet said, have you used it yet? I got you for your birthday. <laughs> I've got a great idea for him now. So, yes, it's been put to bloody good use. Even the river cottage birds don't get this sort of treat. <laughs> Fantastic. If these turkeys start pecking the apples, I'll be very excited. But it looks like the turkeys don't want to play the game. 
slight problem with Nigella and Delia. They're, they're obviously guys now. Look at the weight and the size. Yeah, and... that must have come as a surprise. Yeah, that no, was a big surprise. What do you reckon? I mean, I'd change their names or can I put Delia as the new Hugh or Nigel oh, for uh, Ni Nigella? Gordon, I don't know. What, I mean, it's very flattering, but <laughs> I'd like to talk to you a little bit about this whole name thing. Uh -huh. It's possible that you made a little bit of a mistake naming them. Really? Possible, because yeah. it's that much easier to form a, a sentimental attachment to a creature if you give it a name. Uh -huh. It's actually quite interesting when you see how attached the kids have become. My oldest, Oscar, he's never had a problem with that until last year, one of our cows gave birth. Of course, the calf was a pretty little black and white calf. Oscar christened it Lovely, and we had Lovely, and Lovely had a name, and Oscar, who for a couple of years had been very calm and understanding about the whole grow it, eat it thing, Suddenly he had a named animal that he had a personal relationship. Okay. And then it, that for the first yeah. time we had problems. You've got to start saying to them, which is looking the tastiest? Which one's going in the oven first? Which is going in the oven first? Which okay. bits do you like? Do you, do you like the leg or the wing or will you, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. How are we going to cook them? Taking something to slaughter is an emotional occasion. Yeah. You, you can't sort of totally put that out the way. No. You've just got to work through it. For me, the way to work through it is to think, these creatures have lived very well. I've yeah. done the best I can for them. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the big question, of course, next autumn will be, you know, Daddy, are we going to get some more turkeys for Christmas? That's what of I want to hear. Yeah, um, yeah, that is what you want to hear. Or pigs for spring, pigs for Easter. <laughs> Chickens and pigs for Easter, turkeys for Christmas. I could lend you a cow. <laughs> you could get up every morning and do some milking. <laughs> oh, I might my. just fit it in over there. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> The thing is, though, once you start rearing your own livestock, yeah. it's so lovely, you just won't want to stop. Yeah. And you'll want to try something different and keep moving on. And before you know it, Gordon, this whole place is just going to be, it's going to be a little farm. It's going to be great. Sugar. Let's go. Four now, yes? Let's go, big boy. In. Right, stop. So what have you done to that? So the, uh, the Range caught on the yeah, well, okay. Well, yeah, if it's caught and it's burned, get rid of it. Yeah, of course you do some more. Wake up, come on. We go to all this extent, we make these amazing Wellingtons, and the pan's too hot. Yeah? Of course we're going to do some more. Okay, let's go. First slice. Come on, Ange. Watch, look. There. In, second slice. Now, look at the beef. It's absolutely perfectly cooked because they've rested beautifully, okay? Yeah, nice and pink in the centre, okay? And we all just want to season that lightly with a bit of rock salt, okay? Let's go. Now, the presentation is really important, you know that. We're going to start off with the lettuce at the top of the plate at 12 o'clock. At 9 o'clock, we've got the vegetables, and then at 6 o'clock, we've got this lovely slice of Wellington. Now, this is a classic vinaigrette that's been thickened with mustard. And we're just going to drizzle the warm vinaigrette over the salad and the sautéed potatoes. Now, what would those customers be thinking if you sent all that bitter, burnt lettuce? They'd be pissed off. Yeah, of course they'd be pissed off. Because I would be as well. Good. Well, don't send it then. Let's go. Yeah, Clean sure. the plates. Good boy. Up. Abbas, come on, you can help out. Nice. Not on the rim. Not on the rim. There. Yeah. First three or four tables went out lovely. This stays like that, yes? Good. Mustard vinaigrette. Good boy. Let's go. And take the garlic out. Let's go. Inside the lettuce and just a little bit over the potatoes. Come on, trays out. Come on. Work with me, please. You're standing gawping at me like you're in an art exhibition. Wake up. Go. I look beautiful. Right, you made a mistake like that, yeah? I don't want to see you sulking there like some big, you know, I want you to come, I want you to come back then, your face. Let's go, huh? Wakey, wakey. Richard, how are you? I'm very well, God. How are you doing? Yeah, very well indeed, thank you. Good to see you. How was your main course? Very, very good. You enjoyed it? I never had cooked lettuce before. Really? Now, do you actually cook at home? I do. Yes. And what kind of sort of food do you cook? Oh, uh, simple. Fish in the oven, uh, potatoes. Being Scottish, yes. I, I have to have potatoes with everything. Yes. In fact, if you sent me to a desert island and said, what could you eat? Uh -huh. I'd probably have to say potatoes. I hear, behind the scenes, you're slightly intimidated about confronting waiters when you go to a restaurant. I remember the first restaurant I actually complained in, the tomato, the grilled tomato was black. Really? And I, oh. I 
I choked in my mouth and as I said it, I, I said, oh, look, I'm, I'm sorry, but this, this tomato was uneatable. Yeah. And, and she said, was it, love? And that was it? That was it. Uh -huh. Off she went. But it's really interesting listening to you saying that you're sort of uncomfortable with complaining when the character you played for so many years was <laughs> a constant pain in the arse. Well, Victor Meldrew wouldn't know his way around a good restaurant, unfortunately. No. No. Whenever you want to um, you know, complain to, it becomes a bit of a confusion because there's so many waiters. Always complain to the maitre d' or the manager. Yeah. Now, um, I've got a bit of a food quiz tongue twister a for food you. Food quiz? Yeah. Which part of a sheep's head is an Arabic food delicacy? The eyes. What round sugary thing with a hole in the middle does Homer Simpson love to eat? A donut. A donut. So exactly that. Well done. <laughs> no, I do love donuts. My mother made a good donut. Oh, I love donuts. One insect makes honey. A bee. A bee. Fantastic. If you follow up, yeah, what do you do with your food that's left on a plate? Put it in the bin. Yeah, we, no, you, no, you leave. What? You leave it. You, you leave it. You leave it. Exactly. You've got them all right. Well done. I go leave it. Well done. Please Jonathan Ross me. paid me ten thousand pounds to see. I'm sorry. I'll pay you ten pounds here now. Uh, Richard, you're an absolute star. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Been lovely. Okay. Best wishes. Thank you. Cheers. I don't believe it. I can't believe you said it. I really like my meat bloody. I like it really, really rare. And uh, this didn't disappoint. Whenever I go to restaurants, it's never quite rare enough. So this was really good for me. Beef Wellington was absolutely superb. I mean, it, it really was. The meat was fantastic, melt in the mouth. And the mustard in the Beef Wellington was a rare touch, really nice. I, I don't eat normally red meat, but it really surprised me because it was so light and it was so easy to cut and it was, it was, it was easy on your palate and it kind of went down really easily. I usually, when I eat red meat, it was like quite tough or something like that, but this time it was, it was really delicious and the whole thing was great. Good to see you. Uh, did you enjoy your Beef Wellington? Absolutely. Stunning. Yes? Yeah. Would you try cooking that at home? We were just talking about that, yeah, really? yeah. definitely. And yeah. The Wellington in particular is great for a large party, whether it's six of you or eight of you, or even ten of you. One nice whole fillet. I'm scared of Wellington though, because I always kind of think to myself, how do you get the pastry crisp on the outside when you don't cook it for very long yeah. at all? Yeah, how does good, that work? That's a good question. Uh, first of all, when you start cooking the Wellington, you start yeah. cooking it at 200 degrees. Yeah. And you cook it at 200 degrees for about eight to ten minutes till it gets colour. Right. And then you turn it down to 180 and cook for about a further 20 minutes. So it gets really nice and crispy. To coin a phrase from Colin Farrell, it was uh, bleeding delish. <laughs> but uh, no, as a meal in the whole, it was absolutely beautiful. The uh, cut of beef was just tender, delicious. Uh, the mushrooms loved that and the lettuce was uh, different, but uh, loved it as well. Next on the menu, how clean is my kitchen? I can't believe the mess. Look at the state of it! How clean is your house? Wait till you see the mess I make of you, dear, later. I cook some real fast food. Just the smell. Quicker than a microwave meal. And Giles debunks detox. Does, does detox actually mean anything? Welcome back to the F Word. Now, next up is pudding, where Kim and Aggie from How Clean Is Your House are actually going to try and attempt to beat me with their recipe for a trifle. She's so yes? nervous, actually. <laughs> Ladies, can we get going? Uh, nice clean uh, hands. Uh, don't right, get Kim. nervous because I'm, I'm here. Listen, don't we start start getting twitchy because I affect men like that, you know. Right, come on. Oh, oh, oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> now, I'm doing a bit of a sort of uh, straightforward classic trifle. Um, we're doing a trifle with caramelised peaches and clementine, very festive. Done with the most amazing custards made with vanilla, and then a nice twist at the end. We're going to get some salted peanuts and turn them into a caramel salted peanut. Aggie, yes. tell me what you're doing. Okay, I'm uh, I'm beating up my egg yolk from the sugar and vanilla paste. Yes. I'm going to put a wee bit of uh, corn flour in because I'm slightly nervous that right. it, it'll split. And I don't want that to happen. Okay. And I've also can I just say I've made yeah. my own trifle sponges That's here amazing. with goose eggs that I bought from a farm. That's fantastic. Yesterday. You may as well go home, in Is my that... opinion. <laughs> oh dear, I oh do. So we've got to bloody well win this. We have still Kim. got to win this. So for my trifle, I'm going to make um, the most amazing custard, but a very simple custard, not like Kim and Aggie's. This is sort of done with sugar, eggs, and fresh vanilla pods. Do you know what? I've used the wrong cream. I love you already. You swear like a chef. If Aggie wins, he's going to cry like a baby. I sense that, you know. I'm bloody determined to win. Sorry? I'm determined no, 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 to win. No, no, no. I'm, so, I'm afraid I'm very competitive. 
Now, what's the most important tip you could give to anyone out there about keeping their kitchen at home clean? What would you say to first? To keep your um, wiping up cloth absolutely clean. Stop spreading the bacteria. And clean as you go? Absolutely, clean as you go, that's right. Clean as you go. And get everyone else to muck in. So the peaches we're just going to quarter, roast them off in a little bit of sugar. The exciting thing about caramelising these peaches is done with the most amazing sugar, very fragrant muscovado sugar. And that gives a really nice sort of rich, syrupy colour onto the peaches. Well, will you stop that, oh, for goodness this sake? This man's a big man, you know. Dear, oh dear. You I know, feel like I've got a wiener curry this? back in the kitchen. A bit of uh, here, do you need to take <laughs> off? These love hands are growing Good a bit. Mind God's you, I don't mind hanging off. Ow! <laughs> Shit, I feel like I've got a baby rhino Kim, on my stop. back. Stop, you're putting him off his food, for God's sake. <laughs> If they're trying to distract me, it really is working, you know that, because I can't, can't just concentrate on anything right now. God, I've never had a 64-year-old grab my boobs like that. Uh, now I'm giving the Swiss roll a little bit of a sort of, um, bit of a Scottish effect, so I'm sort of dousing it in Grand Marnier. <laughs> uh, can I just say, <clears throat> I can't believe the mess. I Look know, at the state know, of it! You're right, you're absolutely How right. clean is your house? Wait till you see the mess I make of you, dear lady. Look at the floor! That's deliberate! I've roasted the peach and the clementine off in um, muscovado sugar. They've sort of, um, been caramelised, beautifully coloured, and now I'm just going to add them to the sponge. And then we're going to add the custard. They're very splashy things, though, you I know. know. Uh, not only is my brain set, but the custard's about to set, so I'm going to put that in the fridge to cool down. And once that's nice and cool, we're going to finish it with a creme fraiche, finish with muscovado sugar, and hopefully get rid of that honey monster. I'm finishing my trifle off with some salted caramel peanuts. It's just salted peanuts in a pan, a sprinkle of sugar, and a sprinkle of salt. But this is not any salt. This is not a powder salt. This is called sel de garan. It's a sort of rare grey sea salt. Very powerful, very delicious, and it goes well when you make a caramel. And just leave them to cool down. Rolling pin, break them up and sprinkle them on top of your trifle. <laughs> Custard on top. Now, most importantly, get it in the fridge and let it set for about 35, 40 minutes. Now, I've been in another woman's kitchen this week, and like so many women I've met, she reckons she hasn't got time to cook. I'm so busy because I run my own theatre school. I'm hectic. The phone never stops going, <laughs> hence why I never have time to cook. <laughs> I'd really like to learn to cook something that's fast, obviously. It doesn't take too, too much preparation time. Something that's quick, something that's healthy, something that's not too complicated, which will get my confidence off a bit. I think it's really important to be able to cook, especially when I've got a husband and a little baby. And to eat it all up. I'm very embarrassed that I can't, actually. <laughs> OK. Now, why can't you cook? A few reasons, really. Mostly because my mum can't cook. Really? So you're blaming her? I'm to totally blaming her, yeah. But you must be able to do absolutely these... Well, the simple things, surely. I can do toast. Toast. Ready break. Ready break. Cool, dear, oh dear. My solution is a fast food fix, but real fast food. Pasta. Um, fresh tagliatelle, um, something that is not too complicated. Um, we could use dried uh, linguine or spaghetti, but this is a, a fresh tagliatelle. The secret is, of course, cooking the pasta very, very simply. And boiling water, salty boiling water, touch of olive oil in there, and then you can mix all these things in there. Things like um, marinated artichoke hearts, okay. um, and you know, olives, oh. smoked um, pancetta. Great for pasta dishes, easy to fry, really full of flavour. These general things should be in your store cupboard, you know that. I'm going to teach Rachel a simple pasta dish that she can cook in 10 minutes flat. I'm use some fresh crab, some fresh um, chilli, some lemon juice, some parsley through there, and just mix it up, that's all it is. The hardest thing, of course, is just cooking the pasta. Yeah. Apart from that, everything else is self-explanatory. Great. First thing we do is put on a pan of water. We put the water in, right. it's not going to go to... So take the pot... I'm sorry, it's not coming from the kettle. Uh, no, no, <laughs> dear, oh dear. The lights are on, but Rachel's gone home. <laughs> OK, chopping board on here, please. Yeah, when was the last time you chopped the chilli? Yeah, never. Never, good. <laughs> OK, get the chilli and just rub it together like that. Mm -hmm. OK? And what that does, it loosens all the little seeds in the centre. Right. Once you've taken the top off, slide down the centre like that. Right. OK? And then just open it up with your fingers, look. Just push all the way down. And what that does, it gets rid of the seeds. And the seeds are actually hotter than the chilli. Okay. That's what worries me about chilies. Yeah, well, I mean... Sting in my eyes and, yeah, yeah, you know... The most important thing now is, of course, by the time you finish chopping it, OK, just wash your hands very, very quickly. Right. Get the chilli. Just take nice, small slices there. Three ingredients so far. Pasta. 
crab and chilli. Now just need some parsley, yeah? And it's flat-leaf parsley, so it helps us cut down the strength of chilli and just make it a lot more flavoursome. Water's come up to the boil. Nice handful of pasta. Yeah. Into the water, please. So that's the other thing, I don't even know how much pasta to cook. Pass me the bowl that you're going to serve in. You get your bowl. Yeah. OK, and you look there. OK. Now, that looks a nice portion. Yeah. Yeah? So a spoonful of chilli's in there. That. Yep. Good. Crab meat in. Good. Excellent. You're standing away from the stove and you look like you're really nervous and scared of it. Get close I'm to it. I'm scared of the fat. Yeah, no, you've got to get close to it. OK. And you look like you're in control of it, yes? OK, yeah. How can you handle 320 kids know, and I you know. can't handle one little frying I'm pan? I'm scared of the fat. It's no, it's going burn me. No, it's cooking. That's called cooking. And I want you to squeeze some fresh lemon juice in there. Fresh parsley over there. OK, nice. So lift off one strand. And we want what we're looking for is a bit of a bite in there. Mm. Nice. That's quite firm, is yeah, that about firm. right? That's just, just, just about right. Mm -hmm. Into your pasta. Now, it's really important you get all that crab meat mixed into it now. Mix that up. OK, but look, you're not doing it well. Get the spoon <laughs> in there again. I want you to mix all that in there like that. OK. All of it in there together. Yeah. Quicker than a microwave meal. Um, without a doubt. Yeah. Two really nice bowls. Just the smell. Yeah, it's yeah. gorgeous. Ta-da! So that's a meal for two in less than ten minutes. Here you go. Right, the truth. Mm. I'm impressed. I can't believe you've done this. No, and you, not did bad. It, you did it. You did it all. Well, not too much help. A little bit of help from the boss. Right, James, happy? Very happy. Yes, yes. really nice. Really yeah. nice. Don't need to be scared of something. Mm. Stick to something really, really simple. <laughs> yeah. And just climb the ladder with it. Yeah. yeah? And we use crab. Mm -hmm. You yeah, know, next time maybe prawns. Next time roasted vine tomatoes. And you know, just maybe think about it during the day and pick up the stuff on the way home. Yeah. Yeah. No, no excuses. Good to see. Good to yes. see you too. Don't Thank stop. you. Do not Always. stop. Yes, Always. and Thank stay you. in there, madam. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, excited? <gasps> I'm so nervous. Let's just put them side by side. I always like to see them before we start serving them. Yeah. Like to have a quick look underneath. Yeah, lots of jam. Too much jam, actually. Yeah. Sponge and um, looks a lot of, lot of alcohol shaking down the bottom well, there. Can I just say good luck first? Because I think you'll need it. Okay. Okay, well, I wish I'd got frozen raspberries because these fresh ones have got no flavour whatsoever. Oh, really? Yeah. What do we expect? You don't be licking your fingers, you. Oh, is that all? Oh, he stuck it in there. Oh, God, isn't that awful? <laughs> okay, Jean Baptiste. <laughs> yeah, I've got to serve mine first because these ladies are messing around again. We are not messing one's around. One's trying to grab my bollocks, the other one's trying to pickle around. it. We're there now. Might have a little taste while we're. In no, fact, have you got a straw? <laughs> don't be funny. Right, right, don't be ours, funny. Now. Here's ours. Oh, stop! It's so <laughs> alcoholic! <laughs> oh, God, that is very good. I just need a little bit more... I, I needed a little bit more time cooking the peaches. That is very good. That's beautiful. Oh, God, that is so good. I'm really happy you like it, you know. This week's tasters, I try my dessert first. Yeah. I must admit, I quite like the composition. Yeah. I like the colours mm. in there. I like it because there's good balance between the salt and the sweet. Okay. Yeah. Is it number two now? Thank you. Mm. It's very... This one is... It's slumpy. It's, it's delicious. Yeah. I find it too sweet for me. Bite. Julia, did you, did did you prefer dessert number one or dessert number two? I think I would definitely go for the second one. I'd go for number one. The number two is definitely the uh, best. Let's get the frog in. Where is They're he? Jean-Baptiste Souple. Put these two ladies out of the misery yeah. and tell me... Who's the winner? Of course who's the winner. The, the winner is this week. Yes. Kim and Haggy. Oh, get oh. out! Oh, yeah. No, you're joking, aren't you? Oh, <laughs> I'm so excited! This is so much better! Uh, oh, God! You can't uh, who's tasting them up there? Yes, indeed. They've got, I suggest, they've got crap, can't yeah, they? Yeah, I suggest, I, suggest, I suggest we get their mouths oh, cleaned out. God. Are you sure? Yes, I am. Oh, piss oh, off. Oh, my God, I'm so sorry, because yours is so much better, actually. It really is. It's so much better. Oh, my God. Oh, dear. <laughs> Those two women, you know, they're absolutely obsessed with cleaning. They do seem to be. No, they're just mad. I mean, nearly as mad as you are with your organic food. I'm not especially mad. They, they are mad. If, if, Crazy. if cleanliness is next to godliness, you have been cooking there against the Pope and the Archbishop of Canterbury. Now, you've been finding out about sort of cleaning out your insides, right? Well, theoretically, cleaning out your insides. It's a big boom thing, this detoxing. Every you know, year. Every, every year, more and more people are getting into this thing. It's a kind of puritanical guilt thing. They've been mm. drinking, they've been smoking, they've been eating fatty foods, fast food, and they think, you know, they can't change their lifestyle because no. they're... So they, oh, what can I do? Buy a little pot of something or some pills or go on a regime. 
Drinking booze, smoking, eating fast food, and all the other things you do on a night out, all the other things you do in party season, have a downside. They make you feel terrible in the morning because you're filling your body with toxins. Now, you can either lay off the fun stuff altogether, which doesn't sound like fun, or you can look at detoxing. There's a whole industry devoted to it, all sorts of products, all sorts of ideas. But do any of them work? To find out, I suppose I'll have to get toxic. What about, what about the, the detox products you can buy in the shops? Have you ever tried one of them? Yes. Have you really? Yes. What kind of a product? Just a, a three-day detox. Really? Yeah. Why did you try it? Um, you were feeling terrible or something? No, I uh, think as a woman you did to lose weight. Really? And did you lose weight? No. I think they're an absolute waste of time. But you gain energy and you gain, you gain, yeah, you gain stuff. It's a, it's a, it's a great thing. Eat, drink and be merry. For tomorrow, we detox. Uh, it's the uh, morning after the night before, as it so often is, uh, and I happen to have four or five days in front of me when I don't have to eat and drink and do terrible toxic things, and this would be a good time for me to detox. I don't really have time or the inclination to live on cabbage soup and citrus fruit and water for the, for the rest of my life. Fortunately, there is a range of products on the market which claim to be able to detox me in three to five days. But with so many things to choose from, how on earth am I supposed to know which one is the best? Someone who might be able to tell me is Catherine Collins, chief dietitian at St George's Hospital. She points out that some detox products include laxatives which will help cleanse your body in the way it knows best, in your poo. That makes you feel like you've cleansed your body. It's like poo anyway. Well, absolutely. But these things are, you know, sexing up your poo a little bit, aren't they? And then so this is basically sexy poo rather than... It is, because you've paid a lot for it. Does, does detox actually mean anything? It's the buzzword of the health yeah. industry these days. Does it mean anything it at all? It means nothing at all. It's a marketing term, not, not a medical term at all. Our bodies are treating the chemicals that we get from diet, from inhale, inhaling fumes, from our stressful lifestyles, the things we produce. Our bodies are dealing with that. If they didn't, we'd be in hospital, we'd be dead. You're buying um, an expensive adjunct to a normal diet, and these sort of products wouldn't make a rubbish diet good. There's no law defining what a detox product is, so it's perfectly legal to put the word on any product without having to prove it's true. Boots has become one of the UK's biggest retailers of detox products since it did introduce them three years ago. In January, after the party season, their sales shoot up by 40%. How, how does the detox work? How do they do that? How do they knock out they the They don't radicals? detox. They right. support your body to do what it it can do of its own as well. But they, but they help you, you maximise that potential. It does have some information here about the essentials when do detoxing and mm -hmm. obviously tells you what all the key ingredients are. The, the vitamin C, vitamin E, yes. yeah. Which you, but you, you, I mean, that's, they're, they're vitamin supplements that people might be taking anyway. Potentially, you know, yes. I suppose. Glutathione's so. not one that you would traditionally isn't. find. That's and what really is glutathione? That's a... It's, um, it's a really powerful antioxidant that's naturally stored in the liver right. and the liver is one of the main organs in the body for detoxing. But so if, if it's stored naturally why do I need more? Um, again you may not be getting adequate from your diet. Because there are those who would say in the kind of in the conventional medical industry that the whole, whole notion of detox is, is just a sort of myth. There are different points of view I admit that yeah. um, but I think it, it comes back to the way we live our lives nowadays. We know the body is designed to detox yeah. but it was designed, you know, a long, long time ago and maybe not equipped for the sort of pollution and the environment and the lifestyles that we have nowadays. Yeah. And I think something that can actually support your body in detoxing and kind of kickstart a healthier diet has to be beneficial. The, the benefits of, of detoxing are proven. Um, by? I think by, and the, the customers who tell us they really right. feel better, they feel the But they benefits. don't do lots of kind of, you know, placebo tests with... No, you don't, kind of you don't tend to because at the end of the day these are nutritional supplements. They're things that you would also find in food. Yeah. They're, not, they're not medicines. If spending money makes you feel better, then go ahead and buy detox products. But I haven't been able to find any medical evidence which suggests that you need to. So I'm just going to stick with a glass of water. Next on the menu, the commies find out who's staying and who's going home. Hand on my heart, chef five. Hand on your heart? No. Hand on your <laughs> mate. That's a bit high. I discover what England manager Sven does the night before a big match. Because he's banned the players from having a little bit of nookie before the game, so it must be the same for you. No, well. And Kim charms the diners with Aggie's trifle. Shut your face.
Kimmy, Can my darling, yes. Can you you made the dessert, so you're going to have to help me serve right. it now, yes? Okay, right, come on, yes. we're off round here. Kim, why don't you go actually go to the table and yes, start serving? That yeah, way we keep yeah, you out yeah, of the yeah. kitchen. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so Small much. Mouth. Shut your face. Aggie's <laughs> <laughs> best, dear. Uh, do you feel really happy now that you're serving your own dessert here? I never thought that was going to be possible. You know that. I feel so humble. I know it's only a trifle, but however, it's a winning trifle. Do you know what? I am so effing chuffed. I can't tell you. And you know, at the end of the day, I think yours was better. I really do. I really mean that. But I am so pleased. Apparently, they didn't like the salted peanuts. Well, you know what these plebs are like. Come on, let's go. Salted caramel peanuts. Unbelievable. Savage, please. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Aggies, come on, off the pass. Let's go. My wife does an excellent trifle, but this was really good, and I have to be 100% loyal and say my wife's is better. This is my wife's trifle, and it's exceptional, of course, and she's been practicing all weekend. Oh, That's... no. Hi. Did you enjoy your dessert? Usually I don't need dessert. No. I like to prepare and make dessert. Yeah. I used to do it. Well, but I, mean, I don't need dessert, but it was lovely. But is yours yours? Uh, no, no, I lost the challenge today. This is oh, the sort of... Oh, that's why it's so good. Yeah. <laughs> oh? It's not yours, and I don't like it. It's, uh, oh, thank you. Um, uh, too much alcohol in there, you know that. A little bit, well, um, never is enough alcohol. Yeah, no, I see. <laughs> now Italian passion coming through. It's a little bit too yeah. instant, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, when was the last time you cooked at home? Last night. Last night. And what did you cook? I'm fascinated to find out. Uh, la melanzana parmigiana. You know how to make it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to teach you. Yeah, you're oh, I'd love you to teach me how to make melanjana parmesana. What the f*** is it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 sorry, aubergine. Oh, uh, baked, um, oh, aubergine, yeah, baked uh, aubergine. Uh, baked with Why? the mozzarella. It's mozzarella and tomato. Oh, yes, but it's, yeah. it's hard. It's fantastic. One yes. of the best plates. Yeah, it's lovely. Did Sven enjoy it? Yes, yes, he does. He enjoys his food, doesn't he? he yes, definitely does, yeah. yeah. You're Especially, cooking or does he prefer oh, eating yes, out? No, 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 I do. Yes? He helps me. Oh, I can't imagine standing in the kitchen, standing there with a penny on. No, he is doing well. Yeah. Having, uh, Do you bottom about? Sven, slice that shallot thinner, please. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. We're working together. We're a team. We're a team yeah, no, yeah, in the kitchen. Yeah, yeah. What kind of food does he like eating before a match? Is it similar to the players or...? I, I never ask him what he had. So you're not with him before. the night before? No, I'm not, no, I'm not with him the night before. I'm going to change his allow. Yeah, I'll say. It's rules. It must be, because he's banned the players from having a little bit of nookie before the game, so it must be the same for you. <laughs> no, well, it differs, players and the manager, but we're oh, it's not, not then. before the night That's before. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Rumour has it you find the kitchen the sexiest place in the house. Is the kitchen, because yeah. the other plates are too easy. Yes. Oh, and yeah. do you have uh, wood or granite or marble? What's on your services? Uh, it's wood. 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 So you've got no carpet burns? No, it's, okay. it's wood on the floor, but okay. it's wood somewhere, it's in a marble. Fantastic. Now you're living in London, do you actually miss real, true, classic Italian food? One thing we really were missing, and actually, I have, I have, uh, I have uh, very, a gift for you. It's a yeah. little present for you. The, it is a, a lemon chutney. So nice. Yes, Thank it's you. for you. It looks very strong, it's whatever it is. So it is. Sorry, I'm going to explain what it is. It's a limoncello. Is it, is it, not, it looks like it uh, olive oil, exactly. Uh -huh. But it's a limoncello. Ola, dangerous. It's quite dangerous because <laughs> this is close so, to 40% alcohol. alcohol. So it's uh, like a, a lemon liqueur. And this is your mum's recipe. Yes, it's my mother's recipe. She just sent over today. That smells amazing, you know that? So let me know to what I want to know. Chin chin, what do they say in the. Chin chin, salute. Salute. Yeah. Do you knock it straight back? <laughs> oh dear. Wow. <laughs> Usually, I. <I'll... laughs> <laughs> you give that to the players last week at half time against Argentina. Oh, my God. Is that why they got their act together so finally? That's so, so good. Darling, Again. You've been an absolute star. Darling, now, if I give you a kiss, will somebody be annoyed? No. No? Nice no, to see you. Nice to see you. Yeah. Uh, Congratulations. Thank you. Take care, honey. Thank you. God, I feel pissed. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for me to tell the commies who will stay on for the semi-finals and who will go home. Right, Tama. Yes, sir. Yes, Abbas. Chef. Yeah. Well done to you both. Uh, Tama, if you could change something today, what would you do? I'd make sure a couple of dishes like the, le the lettuce was <laughs> cooked enough. Right, stop. So what have you done to that? So, uh, the flame's caught on the pan. Yeah, well, so OK. Well, yeah, if it's caught and it's burnt, get rid of it. Yeah, of course you do some more. Wake up, come on. Give yourself a mark out of ten. What would you give yourself? Four. Four. That's generous. Abbas? 
five. Five? Hand on my heart, chef five. Hand on your heart? Hand on your bollocks, mate. That's a bit high. Look at that there. Yeah, that's clumsy. Yeah, that's correct. Next time, get it right. Let's start again. Yeah, third time lucky. Scallops in the pan. Now, hello. This time, I want, to, I want you to really think about how much money we're wasting, yes, and I want you, seriously, to wake up and get a grip. The person that I'm going to be um, sending home is Abbas. You're leaving the kitchen. Tema, you're staying. And four out of ten was high. Not yes, bad, sir. but masses of room for improvement. Yes, sir. And thank you. However, I don't feel that you're that passionate about becoming a great chef. But you did well, and you tried very hard. Thank you very much. Now That's put a smile is. on that beard. This is like the World Cup for a footballer, for me. Um, yeah, it's kind of like that. Or, or the Olympic Games for an athlete that does 100 metres. I'm like an athlete of the kitchen. Next week on The F Word, along with our main cause of pheasant, Big Brother's Davina McCall pays a visit to the restaurant. Yeah. So obviously his sex life's gonna go out the window because you can't snog, and if you can't snog, you're not gonna have sex. <laughs> and the kids throw a goodbye party for the turkeys. <laughs> Anything you want to tell me, Gordon? <laughs> oh, sure. Oh. Thanks so much for watching. No, See you next week, 8 o'clock. Don't be dear. late. And she won't God, be here. God, I will be. Stop. Going up here. <laughs> What's going on? Over on More 4, shortly a boozy time from Mum going on a 30-day binge to highlight her daughter's unhealthy lifestyle. Next on Channel 4, I'm going to tell you a secret, a madge made in heaven, the story of Madonna's triumphant return to the stage. <laughs>